I mean, one of the guys, the people we interviewed was a former um, um, a former military suffering from PTSD, a young mm. kid who had been in uh, Afghanistan, I believe, yes, Afghanistan. And he was part of the bomb sniffing crew that goes uh, looking for IEDs. And the car that he was in actually uh, there was an IED that exploded under him, but it was all protected, so nothing happened to him. He suffered a concussion and was out for a few minutes and then was rescued, but there was still incoming shooting coming at him. It was like a whole situation, and he was suffering from PTSD. And he was told us he was incapable, and he tried everything, all the medication that that uh, was available for him by the traditional medical community, and uh, nothing was working. And he says he was having trouble waking up in the morning. He was suffering, again, from PTSD. And then he tried LSD, and it changed, he says, it's completely changed his life. Um, and he started doing LSD through with a therapist, with somebody that sort of a, shame, a, shaman, a shaman, I guess, a yeah. shaman who like, helps him. And we filmed one of his first sessions with a person. Mm. Um, he had t done it before, but was one of the first sort of guided sessions. And uh, it was fascinating to see. Um, and he's, yeah, he's now in school, and yeah. I'm not sure if his life is all perfectly fine but he's doing much better according to him well whose life is perfectly fine yeah exactly yeah it's life <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah but that is uh, one of the best therapeutic uses of it and mm -hmm. did you speak to anyone at maps we did yeah. actually up in canada too we spent time in vancouver as well um it's big there we spent time with some people who are using it as therapy um and it's yeah I, I, it was again as somebody who hasn't done a lot of work with psychedelics it was really really incredible. And I have since microdosed <laughs> on mushrooms and, uh, and I, I really like it. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> I'm a fan. To me, it does what I think I thought people tell you weed does, which is it makes you sort of relax and laugh. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what microdosing. <laughs> oh, microdosing does that way better than weed. Right. Because weed, for some people, it gives you that paranoia mm -hmm. that they don't like at all. Yeah, that's what happens to me. I yeah. become. I think it's if you are more like me, who want to always be in control. Mm -hmm. uh, the weed doesn't work, but microdosing on mushrooms, I've tried it three times during the pandemic. And my my position on that is that you should lose control. That that feeling of busy. wanting to be in control mm -hmm. is ridiculous because you don't have any control anyway, and that you really should mm -hmm. embrace this the paranoia that comes with it because I think what it is is an expanding of your awareness mm -hmm. and just how insanely bizarre life is mm -hmm. life is you you can decide that life is normal if you do the same thing every day and you have a limited amount of variability you know everything you drive to work the same mm -hmm. way you work with the same people you do the same thing come home with the same family and life seems seems okay mm -hmm. and then you get really high and you're like oh my god this is crazy it's true but for somebody who already lives in the uncomfortable side of life mm. constantly for my work. Uh, I'm always in places that usually people would, would make them feel out of control. Sure. You know what I mean? That's your psychedelic Th experience. That is my psychedelic experience. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't need another one. <laughs> I see your position. I mean, I, I see how people are. And I have good, very good friends that don't like pot. Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm a, a pot evangelist. Yeah. Uh, it changed me. changed who I am as a person. It changed the way I feel about things. Yeah. It changed the way I, I treat people. Yeah change the way I look at life. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a uh, it's a tool and I had a joke about it. It's like any tool. It's like a hammer. You could build a house with a hammer or you could hit yourself in the dick if you're crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem with anything mm -hmm. and things are open mm -hmm. for abuse. Everything's open for abuse. Gambling, food, mm -hmm. everything, sex. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, people are, you know, we we have a problem with uh, discipline and mm -hmm. with structure and with uh, an objective analysis of life. And um, so I when agree. you add things like marijuana or mushrooms or LSD or anything to those, you could... And there's also people that have legitimate psychological and mental health problems. Mm -hmm. And for them, it's very dangerous because... Um, I had Alex Berenson on. I don't know if you know who he is. He, was, uh, uh, he used to be with the New York Times, and he wrote a book called uh, Tell Your Children. Mm -hmm. And it was about marijuana and the dangers of marijuana. And I had him on with Mike Hart, who's a doctor from Canada who prescribes marijuana. He's a, a pro-marijuana doctor. And 
I was actually more on Berenson's side, even though I'm a marijuana advocate. I think mm -hmm. it's, for me, it's been very valuable, but I also know people that have lost their mind. I 100% I know people that used to be okay and did too much pot and got really, really deep into it mm -hmm. and lost their grip of reality and became either marijuana triggered schizophrenia or they had schizophrenia already and but it was manageable right. you know that it's probably variable mm -hmm. in its intensity and what happens and then their experiences with marijuana push them over the edge yeah. and i think that's a real possibility yeah but i think you can apply that to a lot of things right? yeah you certainly with alcohol, alcohol certainly yeah exactly. with gambling so there's a yeah it's but again that's a yeah People have a hard time, you know, keeping it together. Yeah. And when something like marijuana comes along, but that doesn't mean that it should be illegal. That means there should be some oh. real counseling and there should be places that people can go where they can talk to someone and therapy and there's, there should be a way to mm -hmm. make it legal. I 100% agree. I mean, one thing we know is that the war on drugs hasn't worked. The billions of dollars that the United States has spent on the war on drugs has actually had the reverse effect. And as you know well, the biggest drug epidemic in America's history was created right here in America by the pharmaceutical companies. Yes. Well, that's how I found out about you from yeah. the OxyContin Express. Yeah. That that was so eye-opening. And when you did that, what, what channel were you guys on back then? Current TV was Al Gore's television channel. It was Al Gore's? <laughs> it was. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was actually a really interesting experiment. So it was right before YouTube started. Mm. And basically they were trying to, the idea was democratizing television. It was giving young kids out there a platform to go out there and explore the world and come back with these stories. So that's how I started. What um, year was this? This was 2005 or six. Oh, wow. 2005 when, was when I started, yeah. Mm. Um, so a long time ago. And then YouTube came around. <laughs> it turns out that YouTube was a bigger success than yeah. current TV. But I really, the show that I worked on was called Vanguard. And it was all these young journalists who most of us had just graduated, but they basically gave us cameras. And in my case, my husband at the time was my boyfriend. We both applied. They hired us both. And then we traveled all around the world. He would film. I would be on camera. And then we'd come back. I'd edit. He'd write. We'd do these stories together. Mm.